the top channels that are just getting millions and millions and millions of views a month and new subscribers all the time. Most of them are doing that because they are just killing it when it comes to having YouTube suggest their videos in that right side column against other videos that people are watching on YouTube. How does that suggested column work and what do you need to do to get your videos there so more people discover your content? That's coming up right after this. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and welcome to Video Creators. This channel is all about helping you guys grow your YouTube audience so you can spread a message that reaches people and changes their lives. And I love helping you guys do this. Let's talk about how to get that massive amount of traffic to your videos using a suggested column because that watch next feature that you see at the very top and then all the videos beneath that, the suggested videos, they drive millions of views per day to different creators. Now, YouTube's goal is to figure out what the viewer wants to watch next. After watching the video they're currently on, what video do they want to watch next? And if you look at this very video on YouTube down the right side column on desktop, you will see that YouTube thinks those are the videos that you should probably watch next. Several years ago, this sidebar used to be called related videos on YouTube, but now it's no longer considered only related content. You'll see a lot of videos in there that are not related to the content that you are watching. Now that collection of videos is more accurately described as suggested videos. And creators have been trying a lot of different things to try to get their videos there, including adding their channel name to the video tags of all their videos and adding their channel name to the end of all their YouTube video titles, thinking that if I repeat this keyword, this phrase over and over again, my content is more likely to be related to my content, which would keep people on my videos watching longer because I have all the keywords matching across my videos. But it doesn't work like that anymore. Actually, it's been many years since YouTube was based on keyword matching. YouTube now uses over 80 million data points to determine what video to surface, where to surface it at, when to surface it, and to whom it should be surfaced to. Obviously, we're not going to get into all 80 million of them. I don't even know what all 80 million are, but we do know some high level things of what YouTube uses to consider what video to show a viewer next. Let's talk about what some of these things are and then some ideas of how you can take advantage of some of these things for your channel. Number one, one of the things that they look for is, hey, it looks like this viewer is enjoying videos from this creator. Let's show them more videos from this creator. And YouTube will do that if they feel like that's what the viewer is interested in, watching more videos from that creator. Whatever is going to increase that viewing session the longest and keep someone on YouTube, engaging with as much content as possible, as many channels as possible, seeing as many, ad many ads as possible, possible, right? Like that's ultimately what YouTube's going for here at the end of the day. And so if YouTube feels like showing more videos from that same channel, it's going to do it. That's what they'll do. Another thing that YouTube takes into consideration is of the people who watch this video, how many of those people then watch video A or B or C or D? And they'll start learning. Most people who watch this video go ahead and watch video C. And so that will make C more likely to stay a suggested video to the video that that viewer is watching. A third thing that YouTube will look for are other videos with similar titles and keywords. Now I know this sounds like I'm just contradicting myself here, but there's a lot of factors that go into this. So let's say, uh, for example, that if you type in something in to YouTube search because you are looking for a specific thing and you found a video that shows you how to unclog your drain, then you're most likely going to see more videos about how to unclog a drain because YouTube has determined that if you type that in, you are looking for that specific thing. It's not always just totally because of keyword matching. A fourth thing that YouTube considers is just what content would be interesting to you. It actually doesn't have to be related to the content or the video you're watching at all. For example, I don't subscribe to Jimmy Fallon on YouTube, but YouTube knows that if I see a good Jimmy Fallon video there, I will click and watch it, even if it has nothing to do with the video I'm currently watching. YouTube knows all my past viewing history. They know all the channels I'm subscribed to. They know what other people who subscribe to those channels, what kind of co channels they also subscribe to that I'm not subscribed to that they could then suggest. They know what things I searched for last week that maybe they should surface 
again this week. They know every video I did not click on and every video I do tend to click on, they learn about my preference and my styles and my taste amazingly well. Even for users who are not logged into YouTube, YouTube is still very, very smart and can know a lot about that person. So the main principle to consider here is that suggested videos are not only videos that are relevant to the actual content that someone's watching, but it's a mix of what's relevant to the content and what's relevant to the viewer. So what can you do on your videos to increase the likelihood that YouTube will introduce your videos to this massive traffic source on YouTube? Well, there's a few things you can do actually. Number one, make videos that a specific target audience wants to watch. I know that sounds pretty obvious, but it's totally true. Too many creators just make generic videos, hoping that a generic audience will want to watch it. And when you try to reach everybody, most of the time you reach nobody. And so instead, think who exactly is this, like the most ideal subscriber to my channel? Who is the most ideal viewer of my YouTube videos? And what types of things do they want to watch? What are they looking for that they will be enticed to watch that is different than like all the generic stuff that they're getting out there from other creators? You need to know your target audience very intimately so that you can hook their attention, keep their attention, hold their attention, get to them at the end of that video and watching more of your content. Content. And the more that happens, the more YouTube's like, oh, this specific person normally watches a ton of this channel. Let's suggest more of this channel to this specific person, this audience, and that's what's gonna start getting you the boost that you need. The next thing you need to do is analyze your audience retention graphs in detail on all your videos so that you know and you start learning exactly what hooks my target audience's attention, what holds their attention, what keeps their attention, what keeps them watching longer, what things do I do that cause them to abandon my videos, what things get them to click on another video in the end screen and keep watching. The goal here is to learn the patterns of what keeps your audience as well as what loses your audience and start eliminating the patterns that you start noticing that is causing your audience to leave so that that you can keep their attention, get more watch time, increase the session watch time, and start getting that lift on your channel and on your videos overall. Third, and you guys have heard me say this many times before, but it's so totally true, is that you need to craft titles and thumbnails that hook someone's attention in the first place. So if you're making like tutorial, DIY type of videos, any educational type of content, you need to accurately pitch the value of that video to someone in your target audience. Or if you're making like entertainment based content like vlogs and gaming, you know, or skits or comedy or things, something like that, those entertainment ones need to accurately pitch and tease the story of that video to someone in your target audience. So don't spend 15 hours working on a video only to spend five minutes on the title and thumbnail and then just throw it up and hope that it performs based on nothing more than the merit of the content. Obviously, good content is important, which we just talked about in our previous point, but the title and the thumbnail is what's going to get people to that video and watch it in the first place. So I think it's worth your time to study how to write good headlines and titles. You know, Google and search a lot for how newspapers do it and how bloggers do it and how magazines craft good headlines because they their business rises and falls also based on the headlines of their material. Regarding thumbnails, maybe it'd be a good idea to take some design element courses through a different online program or something. Just learn how do I up the visual enticement of my thumbnails in a way that still accurately represents the content they're about to watch. If you have figured out a few other good tactics, I wanna hear them in the comments below. And the rest of you guys read those comments down there. You'll have to learn a ton from those people. I always do, the community around here is awesome. And if you're not a part of it, I would love for you to subscribe because every week, multiple times a week, we got videos just to help you guys know how to grow your YouTube channel, the money that you're making around it, the audience that you're growing, all for the purpose of reaching these people with the message that you're spreading so you can change and impact their lives. So thank Thank you guys for letting me be a small part of that here. Subscribe and I'll see you guys again on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday next week. See you then. Bye.